Louisiana Beer Reviews, Weltenberger Kloster Assambach. Named after a famous um, Baroque architect whose last name was Assam. <laughs> Brewed in Germany by the oldest um, brewing monastery in the world since 1050. Now I know Vian Stefaner is from 1050 as well, during, you know, 1050 AD, AD 1050, the days of the Holy Roman Empire. But Vian Stefaner is no longer uh, owned by a Catholic order, okay, it was taken from the church. But the Benedictine monks still run Beltenberger Cluster, Cloister. Okay, this is 6.9, this is the highest on my ABV list, and it says Dunkler Doppelbach, which means a dark Doppelbach. Bach is goat beer, meaning strong beer. You know, a goat will kick you, so that in the past the box would be stronger. Now, some box, what they call box, are not that strong, like a Shiner Bach. It's like four point something, what, four point six percent alcohol, something like that. So you have to drink a lot to get kicked. Um, and there's two main types of box. Your uh, Hellas, which is bright. And your Dunkel, which is dark. Doppel is double box. So then you're up around 7% alcohol, like your Biro Moretti, La Rasa, Celebrator, uh, Salvatore. Those are dop uh, Dunkel, Doppel box. And this is Assam, Dunkel, Doppel box. It's an outstanding score on Beer Advocate, so be like an A plus on Beer Advocate. 99 out of 100 on Rape Beer, and a 100 out of 100 for the style. So this beer is getting a really good score, okay? Five hundred milliliter bottle. Pretty thick, creamy, cream-colored head and a okay brown appearance, dark brown appearance, dunkel appearance. A little reddish brown highlights with the sun hitting it on the edges and some noticeable clinging bubbles and bubble streams. Okay, I was trying to see about my camera because my viewfinder is no good. If I flip it, it's not, it doesn't show anything, so I have to kind of stand behind it, look that way, and kind of position it. But it still does record, so I didn't want to go out and buy a bunch, you know, pay a bunch of money for a new camera if this one still works. Eventually, it probably won't at all, and then I'll have to get a new one. All right. Ooh, uh, <laughs> that is rich, like the uh, Paul or Salvatore. It's that raisiny, dark, roasted kind of um, syrupy sweetness, which I'm sure a lot of people just would not like. <laughs> And it's understandable. Frankly, I know people that love beer, but they just can't stand dark beer or heavy beers or strong beers. Pilsner Urkel, I drink that all day. I know some that would drink Coors Light all day. You know, that's as strong as they like to go. It doesn't make them bad. You might say, Coors Light. That's what they like. Everyone's not experimental. Okay, but this is pungent, rich. Full, a full nose. All right. Let's go with the flavor. Uh, it reminds me so much of the Celebrator. You know, it's got the little goat toy on it, like <laughs> little necklace hanging with the white goat, plastic goat. You get some raisiny aspects, prunes, yeah, you know, the, the prunes, a little licorice, a little chocolate, a little coffee, a little, yeah, all of that. It's strange how all that comes out of just water, barley, malt, hops, and yeast. Even anise. So sweet, so sugary, but not overly sweet, not overly sugary. 
is there hot bitterness? Yes, there is. It's not really perceivable because it's so malty. But if they didn't have the hops, you couldn't drink it. It would just be so cloying and disgusting. You you would hate it. So it's very balanced in that sense. As you can imagine, the mouthfeel is quite heavy. It's kind of a wet finish. It's kind of a sloppy finish. It's kind of a, you know, like Iron Man from Black Sad. Blah, you know, it's kind of like that. You know, marching around. Blah, blah, blah. It's a plotting beer, but it's wonderful in its plotting way. You know, its plotting ways are wonderful. It kills the people it once saved. But, um, almost, maybe a little metallic, uh, but, um, yeah, I come with these four wheelers. Um, so now they think this is a raceway. <laughs> um, I think it would pair well with hearty food. It's probably more of a winter beer than a humid <laughs> springtime beer, but, um, it's great. I don't see any flaws with it. I really do think this is close to world world class. I'm not going to give it world class score. I'm going to be a little conservative. I'm going to say outstanding A+. Plus. But if I had a few more, I could probably, you know, say it's world class. I gave the Celebrator world class, so it's it's so close. But I mean, it's a great beer. The lowest I could give it is an A+, plus, right? Most, I mean, uh, outstanding. That's above most excellent in my grading, which would be just an A, just an A, right? A+. Plus. One of the greatest beers in the world, I think. This is just fantastic. Three ninety nine a bottle, you can't go wrong. Um, but like I say, it's certainly not going to be for everybody. So if you don't like these kind of things, don't feel bad. It doesn't make you less of a beer drinker, or it doesn't mean you have a bad palate, or you don't understand the concept. Fantastic. So, laissez les bon temps rouler. Outstanding, and I'm going to end this review by saying, y'all come on down to New Orleans!